Imagine that you're playing Pycnonomosaurus on Path of Titans. Now imagine that you're playing that creature and also had a childhood. Unfortunately, the creatures of Path of Titans can't utilize any magic from nature or anything like that, so we'll have to do it the old fashioned way. So here's what you should do or fight like as a Pycnonomosaurus. Hello, my name is Adam Wachter, and today I'm going to teach you how to properly fight as a Pycnonomosaurus. Of course, my time with the Pycnonomosaurus are limited, so one of your more experienced Pycnonomosaurus players might not agree with everything I say. If you do find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a calm and fashionly way. Also, any future updates for the game may change the strategy and playstyle on how to play it, so just keep that in mind. In this video, we'll first go over the arsenal, what type of terrain you should choose to fight in, and what type of battle you can find yourself in, be it 1v1, 1v2, 1v a pack, or even your own pack against uh, one singular target. And at the end, we'll sum it up uh, in a summary. For head abilities, we have uh, the normal fight. Nothing too much about it, other than it causes normal damage or medium damage. And the other, a headbutt, a quick headbutt attacker which can be used while running. It does do smaller damage compared to the bite ability, but it also causes knockback ability, which can be helpful in some situations. For senses, we have Lone Hunter, which increases attack damage when not in a group. Okay to have activated at all times, and it will deactivate itself once you do join a group. For legs, we have three abilities. Crippling Claws increases turning speed. Long distance runner decreases stamina drain. Also, they don't mention anything about the bad or negative effects, so I think you can equip this without worrying about that. Strong leg increases your knockback resistance and increases your bone break healing. In my personal experience, I'd say it's between grippling claws and long distance runner. I'd say it comes down to what enemies you're facing, and I'll explain that in a bit. The charge ability. Absolutely important ability, and probably your main damage output dealer out of all of them. It does 110 damage and is the fourth strongest damage output dealer from the carnivores. For tail abilities, we have two options. We have the standard tail, which causes knockback and a bit of damage, and the other one, that a balanced tail, which increases your turn radius. It's a bit off and on on if you should have this or not, but I usually use balanced tail. I'll explain why later, and there's no ability for voice. It goes without saying that Pycnonomosaurus are best suited for hit and run. The attack subspecies are best for that strategy, but that might come back and bite you if you play solo due to the lack of defense. If you're going to play solo, then I would definitely go balanced. If you're going to play mostly in groups, then I would go for attack. I'm not saying that the stamina is bad subspecies, but it's kind of a waste due to Pycnonomosaurus having already very good stamina. Also, it kind of looks weird. As for terrain, I would definitely aim for a terrain that has as few obstacles as possible and pretty open. A few elevated positions might help you escape from larger predators due to you being faster than them and all. Not to mention, have you tried hunting something in a dense area? It is a literal nightmare, not to mention frustrating. The range of attack on Pycnonomosaurus are pretty straightforward, but of course, because your main attack is to just run into enemies, you don't really need to focus on being precise. What you should worry about is finding an opening to attack your enemy, make sure that there's nothing for you to get stuck on, damage your enemy, and then run out and create some distance so you can wait for your ability to charge back up. Pycnonomosaurus are fully capable of going 101 against Apexes, unlike many other of the mid-tiers of course. But you need to be smart about it. You need to do absolutely hit and run, and no head to head. The charge attack does do a knockback and with that opening you need to retreat. After doing this strategy a few times, then you'll be able to land the finishing blow. Remember, you can dish out the 4th highest damage output out of all the carnivores in the game, and that will come in handy. Pay attention to how I did this in an open field. 
you can only go against Apexes if some conditions are met. The only advantage you have over the Apexes are your speed and mobility. If you fight them in an enclosed area or in an area where you can get stuck on things, then you are pretty much done. Also, if you are rather inexperienced with PvP and you don't know how to uh, retreat well, then try to avoid fighting Rexes or Desperate Resorts for that matter. With their bone breaking ability, the strategy kind of falls out of the window and you'll most likely die. Pycnonomosaurus are one of the creatures with most potential when it comes to knockback, so with that in mind you could try and hunt in the Spartan way. Of course I wouldn't always bet on this strategy, your enemy needs to be to a ledge if you should do this, and you also need good timing and well, don't mess it up. It's pretty much one hit chance uh, if you want to try it, but nothing you should bet on completely. Against other mid tiers, I would say that Allosaurus and Tsukumimus players are a pretty good matchup for Pycnonomosaurus. Not for them, but for the Pycnonomosaurus. That Splitosaurus could be the same, but the only thing that gives it a better edge towards the Pycnonomosaurus compared to the other two are due to its bone breaking ability. You are faster than Allosaurus, so it's pretty much the same strategy. Just hit, and when you hit, Create some distance to let your attack recharge. Doing head to head is the last thing you should do. Unless you're both low on HP and you believe that you can uh, outlast him. That is not to say that you should underestimate the other pseudo apexes. They have a pretty nasty bleed, and bleed aren't good when your whole strategy for attack are based on moving a lot. If you do get bleed, then you should create distance, get that bleed away, and then just return to the battle. It's their fault if they do not put pressure on you. You don't necessarily need to sit down either. I was mistaken earlier a bit when I believed that crouching would stop the bleed, but it is enough with just standing still. Of course, while you stand still, make sure you turn in place and continue doing the attacks. Of course, if your enemy does finally decide to put pressure on you, then you just need to create more distance. And that shouldn't be too hard since, well, you are faster than them. While editing this, my advisor did ask me if there are any creatures that we can win a head-to-head -head battle in, and there are, but I will uh, come back to that later. Against creatures either bigger or around the same size as you, you should not go for a head-to-head -head battle. Of course, the other creatures aren't just willingly going to let you hit them with your charge ability. If they are fast enough to dodge your ability, then of course it will only be a waste of stamp on your part. If this gets repeated multiple times, then you will soon find yourself without enough stamina to do the charge attack. And just like that, your strongest attack is out of the game. But do not panic, all you need to do is just create some distance, sleep or rest, and come back later to finish the job. If the opposite were to happen, where you have to fight a slow moving target rather than a fast one, then that would just be a bigger advantage for you. Of course you need to remember, if they are slow for a reason, then they must have some crazy attack themselves which you have to watch out for. If you chose to stay solo, then you will most likely run into people that didn't choose the same as you and you will most likely be attacked by them. In this case, you should size up your opponent and find out which one of them are weakest. In this case, with duo Sukumimus, one of them are defense and one is balanced. In this case, I chose to target the balanced one due to him having less defense. In a 2v1 situation, you can easily fend them off as long as you do the correct thing. In this case, it is to bully the weakest one multiple times 
and get him so low that they have to call off the hunt. In this case the Tsukumaimus was lucky. If they didn't have water I would have most likely have ended him. Also pay attention how the damage done to me are minimum since he is hitting my tail. This is what you should always aim for when going up against these creatures. Run in with your charge attack and if they are going to attack you back make sure they hit your tail rather than your body. I said earlier that there are situations where the Pycnomonosaurus can win head to head battles. Though it's only with cases with low tiers like this Pachycephalosaurus. I would also like to go back to what I said about me using balancing tail rather than normal attack tail. It is due to situations like this where I had to fight a more mobile opponent than me, and turning in place aren't enough. Also, fighting them in an area with a lot of hindrances is a disadvantage for you. So you should try to lead the battle into an open area. For these battles I would also go for the better turn radius on the feet abilities. Because I was taken by surprise I wasn't able to change my abilities. And you can see that in this battle, the Pachycephalosaurus are able to get me because of my lack of turn radius speed. Though in this situation I will just say, take a defensive stand, let him come to you and hit him when he tries to hit you. Also I want you to remember, you are one of the fastest creatures in the game excluding the flyers. So you don't have to fight every battle you come across, you can just simply run and be done with it. The only creature which you can't run away from are the low tiers and you can definitely win against them in a head to head fight. And if they do come to you in a pack, just single one out and target that one. Or if they are too many, just lead them to a cliff and when you get to that point, try to push them off the cliff. Now if you chose to go with a pack, then get ready to rule the world, because a pack of Pikno can take on pretty much anything. Not only is it difficult for your opponent to track 3 opponents at once, but you can also stack your attacks, and you might accidentally kill him faster than you expected. So to sum it up, against Apexes and Pseudo Apexes, do hit and run, charge in, charge out, and then let your attacks charge back up. Do this repeat and you'll eventually win. If it's you versus pack then of course if it's Apexes then you should run. If it's mid tiers then single out the weakest one, target that one and they will eventually either call off the hunt or you can just straight up kill them. In a 1v1 low tiers then you can win over them in a head to head clash. If it's you against a pack then single one out and just target that one. If it's too difficult for you to do that then just head to a cliff or something and just hit, try to hit them off. This cliff strat can also work with the other creatures but it's not something you should 100% bet on. Before I end this video there was a trick that I just accidentally stumbled upon which guaranteed my victory in any fights, even against Apexes. It's not a trick that can just be pulled off by anyone but if you figure it out then you should definitely try it, just take a look. This It is a simple trick, but quite powerful one. And if someone does pull this off on you, do not be mad at them. Get better Wi-Fi.